In this video, we're going to tell you how real D&D groups get started, using our group as a case study. Welcome to the Fantasy Fellows. I'm Sean. And I'm Chris. And we've been friends for over 20 years. Alright, let's get started. Chris has been my DM for two campaigns now, and he hasn't managed to kill me yet, and we've been playing this for about two to three years. So Chris, how did you get started playing D&D? Yeah, it all started when a friend of a friend reached out to see if I wanted to play in his fourth edition campaign. It was a homebrew world. I rolled up a barbarian and wrote a two-page backstory for him. That backstory was never referenced in the six sessions that we played, and that campaign petered out naturally over time. There was a lull there where I wasn't playing too much. I was listening to D&D podcasts, I was playing strategy board games with my friends, and then you decided that you wanted to try your hand at DMing. So you rolled up a 5e campaign, we played four or five sessions, that petered out also, there's another lull, and then I decided that I wanted to create my own homebrew world, and that's how our first campaign got started. What was it like getting everyone together from your perspective? You know, being the DM is a lot of responsibility, and trying to wrangle a whole bunch of people, it's difficult. So, was it a good experience? Was it easy? Was it hard? What was it like? Yeah, absolutely. So, one of the first things that I thought of was the kind of players that I want to be involved in the campaign. I knew that I wanted people who, first of all, were going to have fun together and were going to be able to play well together. And second of all, I wanted people who were going to take the campaign somewhat seriously. When you're making your own homebrew world and your own homebrew NPCs, it takes a lot of time and effort and you want characters and players who are going to invest in that also and take it seriously. So when we first started, I knew that I had two people who would definitely want to play. These are people who, for the past long time, have been involved in fantasy, whether that be board games, or podcasts, or reading fantasy books, or fantasy movies, and generally I knew would be excited to play. So I knew that at a minimum we would have a dungeon master and two players. And to be honest, if that's all that we ended up with, I'd be totally fine with that. I still think that that can be a very fun game, you still have that player-to-player -player interaction, and I think that that would be fine. Once I had that core group, I extended the invitation to two more people that I was a little bit less sure would be interested in playing. So with those people, the way that I hooked them is I said, hey, here's what we're going to do. Here are the people that are involved who you happen to know and like, and here's what it all looks like. And by the way, we'll help you. You do not need to know all the rules. You do not need to go do 20 hours of research to do this. And if you decide after one or two sessions, or even in the character creation process, that Dungeons and Dragons isn't for you, that's okay. There are no hard feelings. You can walk away and say it's not my thing. Because at the end of the day, this is all about having fun. If a player isn't having fun at the table, everyone can feel it, and it's not fun for anybody. So that was important. Luckily, both of those players decided that they did want to play, and have been playing with us ever since. The last player was a bit of a wild card. Honestly, we didn't know if he'd like it or not. We didn't know if he was going to be awesome for the campaign or maybe derail it. And so in between campaigns, what we did is I actually had a one shot that we ran for somebody's birthday. And we invited this fifth player in to try Dungeons and Dragons. It was a really good way to start out. I highly recommend it if you're trying to bring anybody new into an existing party. And it was super easy. We had pre-generated characters, a quick four or five hour one shot, and it was a great trial. And luckily, he was amazing. He really jumped in head first. He brought a lot out. He was great at improvising, and it, he was an obvious great addition to the group. And he's been playing in our campaign ever since. So that's how it felt from the Dungeon Master side of the screen when it's forming a new group. Sean, you've been one of the consistent players in the campaigns that we've played so far. How has it felt from your side of the table when we're starting a new group? And what advice would you give to other experienced players who are excited about the new group that is just forming? The most important thing is just being a person who's willing to help out the DM. You have a lot of responsibility, a lot of time on your hands, and if there's any way that I can just help reduce that even slightly is something really important. For instance, if a character just wants to work on the backstory or wants to talk about you know, spells or some of that stuff, just offering to be that person that can go to instead of the DM for being the rulebook, then that's, that's what little I can do. Second, I think um, being a little bit more flexible on character creation. You know, it's very, 
it's pretty common that you, you have a lot of people who want to play a druid. Everyone wants to play a half elf druid, and you just know that you have no range in your group. So being willing to play a character or a class that kind of balances out the group is important, especially for this first campaign. All right, so the group's together, the DM is doing whatever prep they need for the first session, and it's time to pick classes and start character creation. What's one piece of advice you'd give a new player who has no idea what class they want to play? Yeah, I think if you're a new player and you're just getting into D&D, I think the rule of thumb is to follow whatever gets you excited, whether that be looking for inspiration in a Marvel movie or a favorite book, uh, whatever gets you interested in creating a character or creating a class is what you should go with. Um, for myself, I found that I really wanted to play somebody who I'm not particularly in real life or a more exaggerated person in real life, and that's what got me more excited. So that's what I want. The other thing to keep in mind is that when you're creating a character as well as being excited is that you should try to create a character that wants to be in a group. If they don't want to be in a group, then you know, you're know you kind of losing the purpose of D&D, which is to hang out with friends and to adventure in this world you're creating as you move forward. I think the last thing for new players you should keep in mind is that if you truly don't know what is exciting you or what will get you too motivated, uh, is just talk to your other players, see where they're going, and go in the opposite direction. The group dynamic and balance will be way better for it and you know you'll you'll like it more because of the variety of the characters we're playing with. That was an overview of how our role-playing group got started. Have any interesting stories of your group's origins? Share them with us in the comments below. Our bonus tip of the week is to steer clear of creating a druid as your first character. Druid is arguably the most complicated class in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. In our first campaign, the two least experienced players both decided to roll up druids as their first character, and leveling up and spell management quickly became a chore. The result was that they both spent a lot of time in wild shape, not really diving into the depths of the druid class. They still had a great time sneaking around castles as a giant spider, or running through hallways as a dire wolf, but we really recommend you looking into the requirements for playing as a druid. Um, and understanding the steep learning curve it has, especially if this is your first character. Thanks again for watching the video. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button below. And as always, let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks, Thanks and may all your rolls be 20s.